Okay. I might regret this. Uh, this might not be a close game, but it also could be epic. Welcome, ladies and gents. We've got Bog Islands, a map from hell. If you don't have a plan and don't know how to play it. Um, this was voted into the ranked pool. A lot of people ban this. I ban it. I'm never playing this map again. Or maybe I will once or twice, but not necessarily something that gets me too excited to play. But guess what? I get excited to cast the crazy stuff and sometimes not play it, all right? I admit it. So, um, what I would consider to be the meta here is simply just controlling water and walling up, okay? Because the second you are off your little green little island, that is amphibious terrain, and yes, you know, villagers can go out there and land units can go out there, but ships can go out there. Demo ships could go hit your wood line, fire ships, galleys, all those things are strong. So again, the meta here is you kind of play this like it's just islands, but it's even more effective to go for water control here than it is regular islands because eventually the villagers are going to have to leave their little islands and go take wood elsewhere. So shout out to the people who, who played a role in voting this in. It is interesting. Like the really dedicated viewers, the real like dedicated players I've found have maybe not enjoyed some of the maps that have gotten voted in ever since the devs added the map voting into the game. Because I think there's a lot of people who, who vote on this who maybe have never played these maps before, right? And they're just like, okay, uh, this sounds cool. Let's let's try that and see what happens. And then everyone who's been around longer are just like, oh, God, what are you doing to us, right? But it does produce some interesting situations. I'm down for it. And, okay, well, Blue just killed his rhino with his TC. We have just witnessed a player trying to do what the pros do, weakening the Rhino with the TC, and killing it with the Villager. But like so many of us have done, they killed it with the TC. Oh, God. Oh, God. I did no faith. <laughs> I had no faith in you, Blue, and I'm so sorry. Okay. I mean, the positive for Blue there, obviously, is that you do have three Rhinos on this map, so killing one with your TC doesn't hurt that much. But there's no berries here, right? There's no berries. Uh, there's no deer. So in terms of overall food, you're obviously going to be hurting a little bit if you're blue. Okay, round three. Only way to get better is to practice. Oh, God. Okay. It does definitely fall into a territory where I feel like it's not even worth it to try, right? Like, the idea is it's, it's fast and it's efficient to kill it with the TC. However, the only way to get good at something is to practice, and blue is probably just getting better at it. So we have Italians for red. I assume red is maybe the one who favorited this map. I'm going to assume that red's going to dock, and red's going to go for navy, because Italians have awesome navy. Um, there's a world where maybe blue is cumins, because blue wants to go for two TCs in feudal. I've never seen two TCs in feudal on this map before. You could make it on the island, right? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to tell you the best way to try and play this map. Uh, I really believe it has no counters. You ready? You go fast feudal into water control after docking in Dark Age and making a couple fishing ships. And then you wall, right? So like in Blue's case, you would wall here. You would wall here. So you wall towards your island and towards the edge of the map. So you secure back wood. Uh, and then you just go for Navy. And if your opponent goes for scouts or whatever, great, let them go for scouts because your Navy's going to find them. Eventually, you would just have so much water control that you fully surround them and they just get destroyed. Now, what you also could do if you want to be styly, and I know that for you guys, winning is important, but style is even more important, is you could just send demos to their wood lines if they're not walled. So that's the thing is like at this ELO, players are not going to play perfectly. They're not going to have their walls down. They're going to have some problems. And so you could just show up later on to someone's woodline with a couple demos and just surprise them. So, whew. I thought you banned it and didn't play it at all, so you always win. No, no, no. I did play... Um, God, who was the player I played on this three times? I have played this within the year, which might seem like, oh, T90, that's not that reason. For me, it is because I've been doing this for 10 years. But, uh, you know, a year ago, I remember playing a few games. Uh, I somehow can remember exactly what happened in those games. I was Vikings, the opponent was Mongols every time. 
it was a German player, I forget who, and I can't even remember, like, I'm supposed to go grocery shopping later, and I didn't make a list, and I don't remember what my fiancé asked me to get. But I could remember a Bog Islands game from a year ago. It's just, it's weird how my brain works. Anyways, um, Blue's going to be in Feudal Age here, guys. And Blue... I think Blue's going to try and go for the second TC. Let's see. I mean, the wood's going to be there. Um, There's the scout just passing. By the way, if you want deep fish on this map, you have to go to where the amphibious train isn't. And you just have to look a little bit. Looks like both players have struggled to realize there's fish out there. Okay, the first thing Blue did in Feudal Age is place to mill. I think Blue's thinking about getting the farm upgrade and realized he couldn't do that because there's no mill yet. And also, we've got fire galleys on the way. Two fire galleys, and you might think, well, how can he afford two fire galleys without getting gold? It's because instead of getting loom... He's making the second fire galley. So these villagers are going to be very fragile. You can tell there's some confusion from Blue. I should also mention there's le there's extra buffaloes around the map. So that can be nice. Uh, Red is gone for the barracks. Red's seeding some farms. And it looks like Red might be going for a bit of a fast castle here. So, neither players had this, like, crazy meta strategy down. Both players going for very different things. Both players, obviously, docking, but I prefer Red's position from here. There's just simply more fishing ships. There's more villagers as well. And it's also cheaper for you to go up to each age with Italians, and Italians just feel so strong. It is also possible uh, that Blue went random civilization. That Red, uh, that Blue didn't pick this civ. I don't know. I actually really wish that there was a way when casting if I knew someone went force pick or random sieve. I normally can just assume, like, I would see Italians here and I think, okay, this guy knows there's a lot of water. He's gone for one of the best water sieves. But that's an assumption on my part and I don't actually know 100%. The Red's losing fishing ships to a fire galley and was attacking the fishing ship with the scout now has to run away. This is Blue's point of view. Red's probably pretty stressed. And there's no resistance to this whatsoever. Red actually isn't making any fire galleys. So good jobs from Blue thus far. I mean, also found a lot of extra water buffaloes with the scouting on the sides. So we'll have the food income there. Three LKD so far. All the fishing ships are going to go down. But wait, they won't because Blue isn't killing the fishing ships. He's actually just attacking the dock. There goes Blue Scout underneath Red's TC. Okay, interesting. Just scouting out to see what Red's up to. And Red's going to make galleys here. So the way to water triangle works is in low numbers, fires beat galleys. In high numbers, um, the galleys beat the fires. And then demos could do a good job against the fires as well. Now, that's just the basics of it. But what I mean by that is you simply do not want to make galleys when you're already behind on water. You need to make demos and fires. So I made a video on this, and it was brought up earlier today by a viewer. But the dock is very confusing. And part of it is just, it's just how it works, right? It might always be confusing for people unless they do a complete overhaul. But I, I want to know if I'm still correct on this. Is it true, guys? That the fire galley is on the second page. I made a video about the way docks work. Um, it got a lot of views. There was a lot of feedback on it. My biggest gripe was that, like, War Galley, for example, is the name of a ship. But if you click the War Galley upgrade, it also upgrades your fires and your demos. Not very intuitive. It's very confusing for people. People don't really understand that. I'm trying to remember what's on the first page. Because... That's part of it, too, is there's two pages on a dock. And I think for Red, he looked at his options on the first page. And I think on the first page, you have fishing ship, transport ship, and galley. And I 
thought the second page was like fire ship and demo. They never changed that, right? What they did do ever since I made my video, by the way, credit to them. One thing they did do was they they added a description to War Galley so it says more clearly that it upgrades the other ships, but they never changed the way the layout works. They never changed the fact that you're upgrading War Galley to upgrade different types of ships. Fishing ships, trade cogs, transport ships, and galleys. Right, so like multiple things on the first page are rarely seen and rarely helpful. Demos and fires are a crucial part of what you need on water, and it's not in the first page. Cannon Galleons being on the second half is obviously fine for me because Cannon Galleons, I mean, they're good, but it's not crazy effective for later on, but... Okay. Oh, oh, demo, 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 demo! No! He almost saved the dock! Well, anyways, he found the demos here. Red's not dead yet, okay? I know it looks bad for Red, but Red's not dead. Blue has the lead, though, and could head to Castleage first. All right, so th here's something that Blue might not know until he runs into this. So he's placed three docks. I have to say, very satisfying the way they're stuck together here. But here's something you want to avoid. <laughs> you want to avoid placing docks right next to each other like this because there's always a gap in between. And if you set the rally point to the left or the right, the middle dock ships are going to go that way and they're then going to be stuck between your docks. I'm kind of hoping, no offense, Blue, but I'm kind of hoping that happens here because I want you guys to see it. It happens to the best of us. But yeah, anyways, uh, not the best start here for Red. I thought Red picking Italians would have really had a good plan here. Could get better for Red, though, if Red masses more galleys. So we'll see. Lots of far farming eco for Red. Red will have a lot of food. And we haven't seen full water dominance from Blue. He hasn't continued to create Navy. In fact, if anything, he's creating fishing ships right now. And so not fully surrounding the opponent on water is giving Red a way back. And Italians do have the cheaper dock techs and really good Navy compared to humans. Hmm. The first several water maps I played on DE, I just assumed my Civ didn't get the fire ship upgrade. Yeah, so many people assume that. My uncle... At a family event last year, I forget if I said that in the video that I made, he came up to me and said like, hey, I was playing Age of Empires 2 again, and I noticed that my ships look different from what you're seeing, and none of the civilizations I play get those ships. And he said, do I need to buy a DLC? Did I not, do I not have the right version of the game? And I had to explain to him, no, it's just super unintuitive. They don't make it clear, and there's a second page. And then soon after, I made the video because I was like, my own freaking uncle couldn't figure it out, you know? And he's got like, he's got connections. It's in our blood to be good at this game. <sighs> Not really. But, um, but yeah. So I feel very strongly about it. Um, I'm disappointed that there hasn't been a change on that because I feel like it's something that, I mean, it's been a concern for so many people who've come back to this game. Uh, or played this game in general. And I feel like with a couple tweaks, it could actually be a lot more intuitive. But all I can do is do my best and do my part. And I have to not invest too much emotionally into if that doesn't happen. Because I can get a little bit stressed at times on certain issues. Okay, so Blue, you had the perfect start. The Eco KD 6-0. Now that you have water control, you're even adding fishing ships. All of these things are great. The main concern here is even if you gain a fishing ship lead or a villager lead, guys, it can all die to ships. You're only expanding more onto this amphibious terrain. Ship, 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 ship is maybe what they should be thinking. But they're not thinking right now. We're not seeing any navy right now from red. Uh, sorry, from blue. We are seeing a little bit from red, but not a lot. In fact, we've got a knight here from red who's looking to recover in this game. And even a second TC there. So the water nomad, or sorry, bog islands. I confuse the two sometimes. Bog islands is, is really fun and diverse at this elo because people just don't know yet. I almost feel really bad for telling you guys to just make a lot of ships. But trust me, if you're ever going to play this map and you ever want to have fun with it and you're, let's say, 
a thousand elo or below, do it now because everyone else who's listening to this and will watch this are gonna hear the same advice, okay? I'm telling you, dude, just just load in, go for a bunch of ships, and have fun demoing the poor soul's woodline if he eventually gets to the woodlines. And if you have a really good comeback too, then maybe you could just drop some drop some of those wrecks into the Discord in game submissions, but there's nothing quite as satisfying as sailing over to someone's woodline and demoing 10 villagers. I mean, it's it can be really effective and can be really fun. I I once won this map by spamming galleys and cannon galleons, then banned it. Yeah, it's it's very strong. It is probably what should be your go-to. We'll see if these guys agree and if these guys figure that out over time. Because so far, Red's probably thinking this Navy isn't really that strong. Didn't get Fletching, of course. Didn't get Bodkin. Didn't get War Galley. So. Hello, T90 in chat. T90, thank you for the and the whole crew for an entertaining NAC. Hey, thank you. I did my part. I'm very happy with the casting I was able to put on an NAC. Um, I've been doing this for a long time, so, uh, you know, and, and people might just assume that it's like, I don't know, that certain aspects come natural to me, I guess, uh, and that I just show up and do my thing and it's, it's all good, but I was always really concerned at a bigger event, uh, an important stage, even if it's just my event on my channel, I hold myself to high standards and I want to be able to bring my best cast and I don't always do that, right? I, I sometimes I'll finish, even if I have like... 30k viewers or whatever i i finish and i just think i could be better right and that's not a good feeling for me uh but i felt very good about particularly the last the last day um that i felt the finals was a good cast the games obviously helped as well and obviously i had a whole bunch of fun so t90 do you know whether there was a way to watch recorded games without opening the game question mark no you have to be in the game to watch the game i'm not sure if that question's not clicking for me. Uh, I don't think there's any apps that allow you to do it from like a tablet or anything. That would be pretty cool, actually. But yeah, you have to be in the game to watch the game. Neither player is upgraded War Galley yet. 750 ELO. These guys are pretty solid players. They've done a lot of different things. Here comes Red. And Red now's thinking that maybe Blue has expanded a little bit. So here we go with the Knights. Hoping to find a wood line. Oh, so unfortunate, man. Oh, it's unfortunate for Blue. Blue didn't get to see that. Surprise. Now remember, he doesn't have Loom. He never researched Loom. We have a castle on the front there for Blue. Uh, Blue... Is this going to go finish the castle? Blue, please, please get Loom. Oh, Blue, you are so lucky, man. You are so lucky. All these villagers could be dead. And Red just missed out on that. Now Red's going to see the castle and probably get a little frustrated. Red is 64 eco versus the 49 from Blue. So Blue is definitely falling behind. Blue with the lead in this game. Kind of let it slip. Oh, but no. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is what Blue is looking at. Okay, and now Red garrisons. Now, we didn't see a lot of villagers die, but imagine if there were a couple demos there. Sheesh, that could have been crazy. Again, these aren't upgraded ships, right? With the War Galley upgrade, these ships would be so much stronger and everything would be dying. And Blue is going to sail on home because the Knights have been a little bit of a problem here. And for red, I'm curious to see what the move is next. Because night raids can be effective, but now that your opponent knows about it, they could prepare for it. And you've also just seen your opponent has a lot of navy. Hmm. Tough work for both players because they had a lot of vital time due to the raid. Blue kind of getting villagers back to work now, it seems. Red needs to click go back to work on this TC. And Red's like, let's go. I found the second page. Demos and fire galleys. Now, I, I don't want to be that guy that says that this is just another example of why they need to make the dock more clear. 
but neither player's researched War Galley yet. And it's because they're maybe not wanting to make the galleys, right? Uh, Red's villagers are grouping up to be burnt, to be toasted. Uh, they're going to try to drop a castle here. Blue on the way to the Imperial Age. Trying his best to swarm around the docks, but we've got fires from both. Red's going to have 11 fires. And you have to imagine Blue's going to eventually lose some of his ships here. His micro's been really good, though, using his range. Italians also have the cheaper dock techs. It also is possible for Italians to go up to Imp a bit easier because it's cheaper for them. And if you're red, I'd like to see a little bit of pullback micro towards the castle. This is perfect. And then, bam, now you engage. Surprise, surprise, Blue. What are you going to do? Hmm. This is an interesting game because Blue will be Imp faster and can take some level of initiative here, right? Could make trebuchets, could upgrade the ships. Humans, I actually played this matchup, uh, or I played with humans on a water map the other day. I was playing Baltic, and I got humans versus Malay, and I was like, no, you know. Um, but they do get fast fire, and they do also get Galleon. <laughs> uh, they lack Bracer, though, so going Galleon doesn't feel that strong. But again, we need to see War Galley from either of these. Neither player has clicked it. This is what I mean. These guys are 750 ELO. They're solid players. You could load in here. It could be like your first ranked game against a player who's way better than you at everything. And if you simply just know to get the War Galley upgrade, make demos and fire ships, it, it doesn't even... Like, obviously, you do need to have a certain amount of villagers, but I don't think it matters past 40 villagers. I think you just surround people, and their vill lead's not going to matter. Crazy map. Hard to understand. We're all learning together a little bit, maybe. And we have a Treb first thing here from Blue. So Blue knows about the castle, naturally wants to Treb it down. Makes sense. So I think the thinking is correct. But you need to upgrade your navy. Should also mention one thing. Blue did get careening earlier, which gives your ships armor. Uh, so his ships are stronger currently. Feels a bit weird to say. And uh-oh, War Galley. Uh-oh. I wonder if Blue is going to wonder how that works. Because Blue hasn't made a single galley. And again, my argument with the way the dock works is you just see the war galley upgrade and you don't see a upgrade for fire ship. When it's fast fire ship, underneath the fire ship, you have an option. But to upgrade from this to the Castle Age version, you need to get war galley. This is just not going to work for poor Blue if Blue tries to move forward with one trip. Who does have stables, though? Could try and go for a cav raid. I just realized Red's not an imp yet. Red's still castle age. Holy gold count, Red. Sheesh. And by the way, um, you guys might get tired of me talking about this. I uh, Balance-wise, it's really good how if you get the War Galley tech, it upgrades multiple types of ships. That That's good. You have to go watch my dock video um, if you're at all interested in my thoughts on it. I will maybe put a little edit in here and you could check the description. Hardy could remember to add that. We could be good. It's actually good balance-wise the way it works. It's just the execution of it and and um, the fact that it's really difficult to understand. That's the issue. Okay. Sneaky Town Center here for Blue. Who's going to move forward with the trips. Hmm. Two Trebs, no protection. Sounds like the start to a really bad movie, right? Or title to a really bad movie, so basically every movie that's in theaters these days. Have you guys seen a good movie in theaters recently? Anyone? The last one in theaters that I saw was really good, and I never see movies in theaters these days, even though I enjoy it, was Top, was, uh, Top Gun Maverick, which was so sick. But like, there hasn't really been new movies that have got me excited. I think the majority of them aren't all that good. But yeah, just new movies in general, regardless of genre, let me know. Like, the newer Knives Out was pretty decent. I kind of like the, the whodunits. And Blue's probably looking at this right now, like, how does he get that ship? How does he do it? 
I don't understand. Ant-Man 3 was fine? I don't even know what that is. Blue is waiting with the Trebs. He knows where the fires are. He knows where the demos are. He's found the second page. But there's no indicator that makes it clear that these ships can be upgraded with a tech that is associated with a different type of unit. If there was ever a game to prove my point, maybe this is it. However, there is the the side combo which needs to be had of read, right? Some people are just going to say, dude, read it. If you hover over War Galley, there, there are words. <laughs> hmm. Going to see John Wick 4 this Saturday? Oh, I didn't know there was a new John Wick. I'd actually be pretty down for that. They're not my favorite movies ever, but they're solid. When does it come out? Oh, also, I really wanted to see the new Avatar. I didn't think the plot would be good. And from what I've heard, the plot isn't fantastic. No spoilers, but... But uh, I didn't want to go to the movies alone. And I I appreciate like more of like the cinematics more than my fiance does. So she wasn't really excited because she she's like, I can predict the whole movie. I know exactly what's going to happen, <laughs> which she's probably right on. I wanted to just, I, I would have gone in expecting it to just look cool. <laughs> Demo rafts, let's go, boo! Generally speaking, I'm a pretty good plot, I'm a pretty big plot guy. I, I prefer movie to have pretty in-depth plot, but... What's gonna happen here? I mean, 120 eco for Red, who's just now gonna hit him. Red could make thousands of ships. Maybe that's a slight exaggeration. But if Red had the time with those resources, this definitely falls into the category of if you lose this game, you are going to be pretty disappointed with yourself. But I feel like either player could lose the game. Like, Blue, if he gets enough Cav, could kill everything Red has, because Red doesn't have a lot of Navy yet. Red's getting ship right and getting ship upgrades to make Navy, but doesn't really have the numbers yet and doesn't have a lot of docks. Hmm. Avatar 2 wasn't bad. I went for 3D and it was pretty sick. I think another big reason I wanted to see it was because I saw the initial one in theaters, like, what, 10 years ago? I remember seeing it in 3D. I'm not the biggest 3D guy, but I haven't done 3D since I was, like, like 19. So I don't know if 3D has progressed at all. I remember back when like 3D was like the new thing and every TV was 3D ready and everyone was like, oh, we have to have 3D, at least from the TV perspective. Like I, I used to sell TVs in high school. Um, I don't think people really prioritize it as much these days. Okay. 100 population for blue. Something that Blue's done a really good job of is not trickle trebbing. And that could win Blue this game. Is being patient with the trebuchets and not going in until you have the army prepped. But I mean you've you've waited so much time. And you're currently pop capped. And Blue is realized and is gonna make a million houses here. <laughs> Why watch a movie where everything is scripted when you can watch Loey the Legends and never know what to expect? <laughs> yeah, do you expect Paladin in this game? Or Cavalier from Italians? I think Red is just like, I can do everything because of these resources. But you have to be careful because if you don't have a lot of one thing and have a lot of upgrades, you can actually throw this game. It's one thing to try and get other techs, but you want to max out on one thing first and I think we know what that one thing is we should be seeing and it should be navy those are galleons without fletching imagine if these things had upgrades how poor blue would do here hmm yeah I suppose I shouldn't be uh you know encouraging you guys to watch anything else right isn't that like a stupid move for me so guys movies suck tv shows are the worst I hear if you watch TV shows, you're a big noob in Age of Empires 2. <laughs> Paladin's gonna be in here. 
And Paladins and Trebs is what Blue wants to do. As you can see, even Cavalier with solid upgrades, not fully upgraded, struggling against unupgraded ships, guys. So when 95% of the map is water, why make anything else? And we'll see if it's going to be what Red continues to make, though. Red's going to make some Cavalier. Still getting lots of upgrades right now. I feel like if the Paladins were to hit this location, Red would have some big problems. Also, this is funny. Uh, Red must keep forgetting about the relics. <laughs> what will we not watch when you're not streaming? I have 2,000 videos, man. And no one watching this right now can say they've watched everyone. I highly doubt it. You might have watched 95% of them. But I have some videos that still have under 5,000 views somewhere out there. Like some of my really early ones. So, <laughs> you... I'll be honest. <laughs> Probably not very entertaining. <laughs> a little embarrassing that I've left those videos up on the channel, but... Um, I, there was actually a point where I deleted some... Of, where are these traps going? <laughs> what? Oh, God, they're stuck! <laughs> oh, what? Their traps are stuck in the trees, man. Oh, isn't that the cutest little nook for the traps? Anyways, um, I'm just kidding. Obviously, I'm happy to have play any part in your lives. And if you can't, you shouldn't be watching me all the time. And I'm not the only form of entertainment you use. And that's okay. I like to be able to talk to you guys about stuff. You know, like, we're kind of buddies in a way. A weird little parasocial streamer viewer relationship. But again, Blue's got a chance here because Red isn't really committed to one thing. I'm not sure why Blue left the Treb go. He's also not really going for the kill. He seems to be trying to chip away with the Trebs, which is not the type of push that I would suggest. But the Paladins are doing work. Italians get Pikemen, but you know, Pikemen don't do near as much bonus damage as Halberdier. They don't get Halberdier. Instead, what they typically go for would be Navy or Genoese Crossbowmen, neither of which we're seeing right now from Red. Someone had just said, you never know what happens at Low Elo Legends. I'll tell you one thing that does happen a lot. Some comebacks. You could call it a comeback on one side. You could call it a throw on the other. Either way, Blue's putting in the work. And Blue just says, Paladin and Trebs, let's go. Red. You have so many resources, my friend. Clearly, both players right now, they don't know how good the Navy's going to be, right? They've kind of given up on that. And Blue sees the castles now and has these trebs ready to go. Oh man, I, I can I can tell that Red is very stressed right now, guys. I'm sure you've all been in this situation before where you start to look at your screen and realize that everything's happening too fast. He does have Pikeman in queue and he does have Cav in queue. But is it gonna happen fast enough? He is trying to take out the trebs, I've noticed. And Blue's Trebs can't really decide where they're attacking. So Blue also with some... You, know, you have some defense anxiety, but maybe some offense anxiety as well from Blue. Some struggles here. Mm. I'm not sure how many houses Red has, but there is a risk that if you lose two castles, you then run out of population space soon. My advice would always be focus on one castle at a time with Trebs, by the way. This is a dangerous game to play and can lead to you taking out zero castles. That one's at 59 HP. You're kidding. You're kidding. We've got more pikes on the way for blue. Continues to queue them up. Something, or red, excuse me. Something that red's done a good job of is the unit queue. It has lots of production buildings. And even though ground is being lost, there's always more units coming. This castle still stands for now for red. And Blue, probably taking time to look back home to queue up more units, is going to finally finish off this castle. Neither player fighting with full blacksmith upgrades on all their units, but at least since Red's fighting with mainly land units, he's about to be. He'll have Imp Armor in. I also think this is a world where after you've taken out this many castles, you let your paladins fight and you look away. Blue's been very protective of the Paladins and likes to watch them kill things and whatever else. 
But I think you just need to let them kill, because they're doing well, and go back home and focus on producing more. If you focus on producing more, you win this game. Oh my god. And, and spreading them out as well? This is perfect. He's kind of doing it. Oh god. The big thing to remember about pikes, and I say this as frequently as I can now, because it needs to click in your brains, okay? There's civilizations that have pikes only, they don't get halb, that have some bonuses, like Vikings, for example, with more HP. Aztecs, that get plus four attack on their pikemen. Guess what? It's still way worse than going with regular halbs that don't have any unique bonuses, because it's bonus damage with the pikemen. It's not HP, it's just 55 HP. It's not base attack, it's just four attack. It's bonus damage. So what that means is, if you have a civilization that doesn't have halb, they probably have to do something else, right? In the Italian's case, it would be Genoese crossbow. In the case of, like, Mongols, they have camels. And I could think of other examples, right? Also, just realized that Bloodlines wasn't in that entire time for blue, so he'll have more HP on these paladins now. But red has been rocked, and, you know, I'm sure red has realized now that maybe the paladins were here, but the stress is real right now for red. Does have time to rest, though, and does have fully upgraded pike. Whew. How many other examples are there? Ah, oh, don't make me go down the list. Don't make me do it. Um, Ethiopians? No, Ethiopians get how? What am I talking about? Malians is what I was thinking of. Yeah. Malians get, uh, they don't get halb, but they get pike, but they, and then they have camels, right? How many civilizations only get pikemen, actually? Now I'm thinking about this. Okay, there go the paladins. Uh, Blue's probably like, oh man, I didn't have upgrades. So now he's going to have fully upgraded paladins in a couple minutes. Here go the paladins. They're going to head right to the town center. They cleared up all the villagers here before. And this is Blue using the mobility. Oh, look at this. Leave some of the group here. It cl clearly, Red has clicked a paladin that's in the other group, which is kind of funny. And Blue wanted to use them as a distraction so he could take out this TC. Oh, man. Red. No. He's trying. What, such a great raid, though, from Blue. And he did the right thing. You, you run in with one big group, and then you split them up. It's very difficult for even high-level players to track that appropriately. So at lower elo, man, this is going to end your day. It really feels like even though the, the resource count was high for Red earlier, resources were spent on so many things. And the, the, again, the one thing we were kind of hoping for, for Red's case anyways, is we were hoping for Navy. And we didn't see a lot of it, and we didn't see a lot of archers either. Just pikemen. And the archers don't have some of those blacksmith upgrades. Easy lessons to learn if you're Red. In the moment, though, it's so hard to remember. So if you're out there watching and you're typing a comment like, Oh, it bothered me so much how Pakus, that's his name, how Red didn't get those upgrades. No one at my ELO when I'm 750 ELO does that. Well, that's not true. If I were to watch your games, I'm sure you miss upgrades in the moment. I'm sure you forget some basic things because guess what? We're watching with all these things in mind because we have a something on our screen that shows us what's been researched and we have all vision and we don't have the stress and the ridiculousness of the moment. T90, Mongols, Saracens? Ah, forgot about Saracens. Okay. Well, Turks don't get pikemen. But I see what you mean. Uh, Berbers, okay. Poles, Gurjars, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the list there. I think Gurjars and Turks both don't get pikes though, right? Now, we saw, we saw Red have a good position to win this game and he wasn't really able to take it let's see if blue can finish off this guy let's see if he can win the game it has arrived to a point though for red where his economy is so much worse in the long term so it's actually a position where he would need to do a lot of damage over the next couple minutes or rebound his economy this will help let's hope blue notices this uh, oh god <laughs> oh god <laughs> Okay. Well, that's not so good. Oh, God! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> oh, God! Disaster for blue on both sides! 
<laughs> oh, God. Oh, well, you can kind of think about it. Because think about it if it works, right? Oh, I drop a castle on this side. And then I drop a castle on the other side. And then we kill him. <laughs> and then he loses 20 bills. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. <laughs> Blue just raided his own economy. <laughs> Hey, I mean, Red's making more vills. That's something. Red also has defensive castles in some areas. Also, this Arbalest is a real MVP, killing some villagers. Blue is making more vills as well, though. So, And Blue is mining gold, which is really important, because there's not a lot of gold left on the map. So, God. Like, you get, Red has to know Bod Canero and Bracer exist. It's just... Red is just too stressed out and is forgotten at this point. Oh, man. Such such a painful situation. Guys, there's still one unit type that wins Red this game. And I guess, sure, you can combine it with Pikeman. You want to go Navy, man. Navy. Fast fire ships with Pikes. Oh, it'd be so good. Even just... Some demos here or there would be really helpful, but I don't think Blue's going to give him the time. Blue's ready. Try this all over again. Knows there's a castle there. Spent some time over here before. Knows this is also where the barracks are. I think that would probably do Red in, is if Red lost all the barracks. I don't know if Red would have this fighting spirit to make 20 more barracks like this. Fully upgraded Paladin up against the Pikes. You could already see it by the KD, but Paladin owned Pikemen. It's not even close. Not population efficient at all, if you're red. It's clearly desperation, right? If this isn't working, I think red might be forced to tap out. There's no counterattacks. And the pikeman rally point is all set here. A lot of the times, they're just walking to their destination, which is probably here. So they're not fighting as quickly as maybe they need to be. Red has rebounded a bit. He's up to 44 on food again. I think that's higher than where he was before, but he taps out. He calls the GG. The GGs are exchanged. And I think some lessons are going to be learned on both sides here. Like, I think it's fair to say that both players had leads in this game that they could have taken advantage of. Blue, in the end, even though he had the initial lead in this game and kind of backed off it, ends up getting the win. But Red fell into the trap that a lot of people fall into when they have a lot of resources. They try and just tech into everything. But... If, you're, if you want to plan ahead and tech into everything for the long term, that's fine. The key, though, is to make sure that you have one unit, which you know is very strong. It could work well. Your, your base unit, and normally that's a gold unit. So it could be a big mass of Arbalest, a big mass of Paladins, a big mass of Navy, because this is Bog Islands. And then, once you've got that, then you start to sprinkle in some technologies for other things, sprinkle in some other buildings. Um... It's just so easy to fall into that trap. And I mentioned it when I saw the resources for Red and I saw the way he was playing it. He felt like I can never lose this game now because I have 4K gold. And fast forward another 20, 30 minutes and he's lost the game. Again, my advice to you, I already gave you. If you're playing this map, I'd make a lot more water control. Uh, watch my dock video if you haven't already. It kind of explains how the docks work. It is unintuitive, but just to restate it, Get the War Galley upgrade in your docks. It upgrades your fires and it upgrades your demos and everything else. You will eventually need to get Fast Fire, which we did see from Red. And then obviously getting Blastmate Technologies for your Navy is strong as well. Um, I think full-on Navy is the way to go on this map. But to be honest, I wouldn't have been casting it if I thought it was going to be that at low elo. Because... Uh, maybe maybe I'll do a Bog Islands cast at a high level, actually. If people have interest in that, leave a comment. It's not boring. It's just so different, right? So different. It might be the one game mode or the one map, which is night and day difference from lower elo because of the high-level approach is just so streamlined towards the Navy. Um, anyways, here's a look at the economy of this game. Red's not going to like to look at this when the game ends. Collected more wood, more food. 82,000 resources versus 74. Did actually have some gold here. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh my god. Are you kidding? I was going to be critical of Red. I can't even be critical of him. Didn't see the gold. Uh, that would have been really helpful. Um, but yeah, it was still a really good game. Back and forth action. Like to see it. 
Uh, one question here from Chad is, are blacksmith upgrades for fire galleys? No, no, no. Fire galleys aren't affected by blacksmith upgrades. Just the uh, galley line, so the range and the attack on, um, on like, galleys and galleons, right? Uh, that's where the blacksmith comes in handy. That's another thing, too. That's always complicated with Age 2, though, because, like, blacksmith technologies apply to some things and not others. But again, like, the game itself is already hard to learn when you're just talking about land. You incorporate water, and you incorporate a map like this, and suddenly it's very different. But GG, uh, well played to you, Andres, for recovering after shooting a rhino with your town center earlier. I bet you were hoping that I wouldn't bring that up again, and that everyone for would forget about that, but you can't get off the hook that easily, my friend. Uh, well played, though.